Auspicious blessings to everyone. Welcome to the Fu Guangsheng English Dharma Service. I am Zhi San from Fu Guangsheng Shilai Temple in Los Angeles, California, USA. Last week, we talked about the Buddha's approach to management. Today, I would like to share with you about Fu Guangsheng's approach to management. The founder of Fu Guangsheng, Venerable Master Xingyun, was often asked, Fu Guangsheng has hundreds of temples and affiliated organizations across the globe. How do you lead and manage an organization of this size? There are a number of different methods and techniques Venerable Master Xingyun uses to manage. But the following are the four most fundamental principles. Number one, Monastics do not have their own private devotees. Number two, no private ownership of money or funds. Number three, mandatory rotation of jobs and positions. Number four, promotion and performance evaluation system. First, monastics do not have their own private devotees. Devotees of Fu Guangshan do not belong to any individual monastic. All devotees are followers of Buddhism as a whole. Monastics are only distinguished based on the time of their ordination. Designated as the first generation of disciples, second generation, third generation, etc. Since devotees do not follow a particular monastic, there are no conflicts or rivalries between monastics for devotees. Second, no private ownership of money or funds. Monastics of Foguanshan do not possess private property or savings. All donations go to the organization as a whole. Although the monastic do not possess money, it does not mean that they are left unsupported. Fu Guangsheng provides monastics with food, clothing, travel expenses, medicine, study abroad experiences, and opportunities to visit their families. Monastics are even given gifts to present to their families during home visits. At Fu Guangsheng, all the money belongs to the community not individuals, or are supported communally by the system. Third, mandatory rotation of jobs and positions. Akin to the sayings, pure water comes from a flowing stream, and a rolling stone gathers no moss. Vogonshans regularly rotates its monastic jobs and positions. No individuals owns any branch monastery, temple, or affiliated organization. One year, a given monastic may be an abbot, while next year, they may be reassigned to another temple, doing entirely different work. There are many benefits to this kind of job rotation. The chance to learn and grow, create connections with new and different people, and gain experience in many fields. Fourth, promotion and performance evaluation system. A monastic in Fu Guangshan begins with the title Jing Shi, pure practitioner, which means one who doesn't have specific duties other than Buddhist practice, and advances through three successive levels, Xue Shi, Learner, Xiu Shi, Advanced Practitioner, and Kai Shi, Instructor. Advancement depends on an individual's effort and performance in scholarship, Dharma practice, and service to the organization. Thanks to this orderly system, Bo Guangshan has enjoyed smooth and successful growth. In addition, Fu Guangshan monastics are trained and assigned to new positions based on evaluation and assessment. 
members are classified into the following groups according to their talents. Number one, abbot or director. An abbot should have a clear understanding of the principles of Fo Guang Shan. He or she must also show loyalty, resolve, initiative, and commitment. An abbot should be able to deal with both superiors and subordinates in a knowledgeable, virtuous, confident, and presentable manner. He or she should master sutra recitation, ceremonial rites, and teaching the Dharma. Number two, guest receptionist. This person must become an authoritative in words and manners. He or she should be familiar with social customs and etiquette. This person should be sociable, empathetic, active, positive, and understand the mission and vision of Fo Guang Shen. Number three, educator or scholar. A scholar is one who slowly and meticulously pursues knowledge. They must be logical, clear, and to roof in their studies, avoiding the pursuit of fame. As an educator, they, their thoughts must be pure, they must be capable of motivating their students and elders alike. They must adhere to Buddhist values in their words, avoiding conflict. He or she should be skilled in gathering, using, and spreading knowledge, constantly publishing new works. Number four, coordinator. A coordinator should be insightful, innovative, familiar with data analysis, able to maintain privacy, and capable of remaining in the background. He or she should know how to integrate Buddhism into mundane society. A coordinator must be adept in written communication and in providing staff support. Outside of these career tracks, there are positions focusing on other talents, such as those with legal expertise, accounting expertise, and administrative expertise. Shared vision and values are of utmost importance for an organization. Such cohesion of thoughts require a great deal of communication and coordination within the organization. Meetings are essential to establish a convergence of ideas and opinions. For this reason, Fo Guang Shan takes meetings very seriously. It frequently holds meetings in order to achieve consensus and a shared vision. Proper use of personnel is another challenging aspect in management. Buddhism also has long emphasized the importance of people and managing them to their fullest potential. Venerable Master Xing Yun has formulated some of his own principles regarding a Buddhist approach to personnel management. A. Consider any effects on the organization as a whole. B. Divide responsibilities with well-defined roles. C. Understand the importance of coordination. D. Plan for all things we care. E. Perform to one's fullest ability and with determination. F. Report regularly to keep one's supervisors informed. G. Take responsibilities and be accountable for them. H. Evaluate one's performance and follow up. In addition, it is essential that both superiors and the subordinates be honest in their communication, have mutual respect, be active in their work, self-motivating, sincere in their evaluation, and frequent in their coordination.
Furthermore, a modern manager or leader should act in the following manner: a. Put a smile on your face. Have praise on your lips. Hold criticism inside, and keep anger in your stomach. B. Avoid hasty and harsh actions. Choose word, your words carefully. Criticisms accomplishes nothing. Doubts lead to disloyalty. C. Treat others with lenience, but monitor yourself strictly. Give credits to others, but take personal responsibility when something goes wrong. D. Put aside thoughts of personal gain and go forward. Do not be frustrated or obstinate. E. Keep your eyes on the bigger picture. Work in harmony with others. Let communication flow freely up and down, and strive for consensus. F. Serve others sincerely. Live by your words. Plan ahead for dangers, and understand yourself and others. G. Be observant. Adaptable and considerate of others, take advantage of opportunities, and make the most of your life. H, be good-natured, listen attentively, study carefully, and be respectful of others' opinions. A leader must also know how to develop, cultivate, and nurture competent staff. He or she should be able to recruit, train, and empower talented employees. A common mistake committed by a leader is criticizing a subordinate, yet failing to offer guidance. In addition, a leader or senior executive should frequently engage in self-assessment and ask subordinates for input. Harmony between a leader. And his or her staff is a stabilizing force for any organization. How should a monastery be run? Venerable Master Xingyun's answer is that the traditional system of administration and modern management system should be integrated. The temple should be self-sufficient economically and financially. Enterprises compatible with Buddhism should be permitted. The administrative core of a temple should interact closely with the surrounding community. Effective personnel management requires division of labor in a cooperative environment. Management should make decisions reaching out in all directions, and considering past, present. And future, giving people faith, joy, hope, and confidence. One must be able to give ground, make something out of nothing, find happiness in emptiness, and think of all people as oneself. Consider the temple, the community, the organization, and Buddhism first. Place others before yourself. Encourage frequently, give generously, and speak kindly. All the above are necessary concepts and philosophies for a modern manager to run a smooth and successful organization. The administrative system of Buddhist monastery has evolved over many centuries. With every passing age, it developed unique characteristics. The sangha originally established by the Buddha followed the principle of respecting the elders while empowering the multitude. It gave authority to former acts of the sangha, voted upon by the assembled community, which occupies a role similar to a parliament in a democratic society. When it traveled to China. The monastery administrative system came to emphasize personnel management and division of labor to maximize the productivity of individuals. Both represent excellent models of management. 
in our search for a new management system. We should enhance both systems by adapting them to the needs of our modern society. Modern management focuses on organizational interaction and coordination. Strong group dynamics synchronize the steps of upper management and employees, ensuring the consensus and shared values necessary to achieve goals. Buddhism has emphasized group dynamics. As seen in the six points of reverent harmony, codes of communal living, and Chan Master Bai Zhang's rules of purity, Buddhist management relies on principles such as self-discipline, self-motivation, self-monitoring, and repentance. The management philosophy of Fogong Shan is to give people faith, joy, hope, and communion. How does one master Buddhist management? We believe that before one can lead, one must be able to follow. Thank you for listening.